what's up everybody it's your girl janae Shandell, and welcome back to my channel delving sideways if you are new here so glad to have you and if you are not new here then good to see you again okay so today i want to talk about something that used to give me so 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 much anxiety and that is gift giving gift giving I know the holidays have long gone, but there are Christmas gifts, birthday gifts, anniversary gifts, um, Valentine's Day gifts, baby shower gifts, wedding gifts. I've been clean for two years and now I have another medallion gifts. The list could go on and on. So if you want to know how I overcame this anxiety with a foolproof and meaningful strategy, then stay tuned. <laughs> Okay, welcome back everybody. So if you are anything like me, then you can understand why gift giving used to give me so much anxiety. I am an overthinker, an overanalyzer, a procrastinator, and on top of that, I'm a part-time cheapskate. So now, not only am I stressing out about finding the perfect gift, but now I'm in a time crunch because I waited till the last minute and because I'm cheap, I now have to find something that is within this imaginary budget limit that I've given myself, which is usually $50 or less. This ridiculous formula has caused me so much grief every single time. So I got to thinking, how can I make my life easier, but still give gifts that are thoughtful and personalized at the same time? That's when I came up with the idea of books. See, what I have learned from my overpriced undergraduate degree in sociology is that no matter who you are or where you're from, humans all share the same hunger for two things, and that's knowledge and escapism, both of which can be satisfied through books. So instead of trying to go to 10 different sections in a store to find one perfect item, I now can go to one section and find a book title that I feel either relates to their interests, personality, or desires. Now, let's be clear. I wasn't really sure this strategy was going to work. I mean, in a world full of audible audiobooks, do people even still read physical books anymore? In a world full of social media and online news, is literature still a thing? And the answer is yes. Overwhelmingly, yes. And those who have been the recipients of my book giving can attest to that. See, even though we live in a fast, fast world, there are three things that a book can provide. And that is one, me time, two, an escape, and three, a purpose. Now, if you don't agree, let's argue. So you definitely get me time because when you are preparing to read a book, you intentionally separate yourself from everyone else so that you can find a space and in, in, in like a uh, area where you can be alone with your own thoughts. And that feels good. It feels good to be alone with, with your own thoughts sometimes. And like as people, we spend so much time taking care of others and catering to others and making our, our whole life and time revolve around others that we really get a moment for ourselves. So having this book to read gives you an excuse to have me time and alone time and I don't see any debate with that. And two, an escape. I think that by temporarily detaching yourself from reality, you are allowing yourself to be immersed in this book in this world and in in a way that immersion gives you this escape from reality and i think in the current state of the world an escape is sorely and direly needed finally a book provides purpose when you open that book you have a purpose whether it's to just finish reading it or to laugh or to take something away from it it's still a purpose these three things are why i have chosen to buy books for others and why I continue to buy books for myself. So if you have not yet perfected the fine art of gift giving, then I encourage you to try giving books as a gift and enrich one life at a time, one book at a time. 